Hello folks, it's your standard garden variety Lonnie here and Exodus for Linux is finally upon us. Well, it has been for weeks actually, but since it's the Christmas season as of recording this, yours truly has taken his sweet time installing it. The Linux patch supports version 6.4. Fortunately, if you have version 6 and run a torrent of Exodus 6.4 over the top of the directory, it'll grab and replace the files for you. After that, you'll want to head over and get the Linux patch, which can also be acquired by torrent and saved into the Exodus 6.4 directory. The media pack, as with the Windows installer in its original release, is optional at this time. After you've got all the files, you need to run install dependencies.command. Depending on your file manager settings, you might want to enable executing the file to run as a program, as by default a lot of Linux distributions won't let you run shell files you randomly download from the internet. I'm on Mint and it played nicely, but as with all things community created, your mileage may vary with every step of this installation. What Dependency Installer does is checks that you have all the system packages required, and then installs the flat packs that your Linux machine needs to house all the emulators Exodos uses. So even if you've installed Exodos 6.4 elsewhere, you do need to do this. Once all dependencies are satisfied, press a key to proceed. It'll extract all packages and then install any other flat hub bits and pieces it requires. I had already installed Exodos 5 on this machine, and the dependency installer acknowledges that, removing the old flat packs no longer required to keep everything clean and tidy. On occasion, you may be asked to make a choice with similar installed refs. That might be because you've already installed DOSBox by flat pack already. I hit 1 because master sounded cooler than stable. If this question confuses you, go check out the Linux Port for Nerds channel on the official Exodos Discord. The remaining flat packs and their permissions will now be sorted, and you don't have to do much more. If you had any issues or problems with the guided setup, rerun it and select the download the latest setup option, and then go through the setup again. Eventually your terminal will tell you that all required dependencies are now satisfied, and direct you to run setup exodos.command. Don't run the batch file beside it. Make sure the file type is .command. .bat is for the Windows version and isn't needed here. Upon running the shell script, it will check to see if you have a previous install of an Exodos project on your system. It will then give you the option to re-extract, update or install all exo packs in this folder. C to continue is the option we want here. This will take us to exo merge which will detect the projects in the folder. Since it has only spotted Exodos and Exodos Linux, we don't need to worry and can hit continue. Merge instructions are available for those who want more documentation on this process of combining Exodos projects. At this point, the shell script will complain that the media pack is missing. We can skip that by hitting any key. It's just a helpful reminder that we can add these features by downloading it and running the setup file again. With all files verified, it'll begin setup and extract the files. Once this is done, press a key. It will now extract metadata from LaunchBox and hand it over to ExoGUI, the Linux Exodos launcher. This takes substantially longer depending on your hardware configuration, so go and have a like. Exodos also has the handy ability to remove adult games. This means titles with explicit material, but not violent titles. So if you're sharing this with friends and family and don't want them playing strip poker on your setup, this is a useful option. We are then guided through a handy series of global defaults that all games in the pack will attempt to adhere to. Simple things like full screen or window and what resolution your desktop is for windowed titles, should you choose that. It's 2024 and I'm still using 1080p, so medium it is. Aspect correction ensures that most games run in a 4-3 ratio, which is the shape of many of the old CRT monitors that these games were designed for. This isn't as important as it used to be, and most people can select yes from here, as selecting no will cause it to stretch horribly in many cases. Blow it out your ass. Duke Nukem informs us that the setup is complete, and offers to create an icon on our desktop. Some distros will ask for permissions to execute that. It's a simple case of telling them yes, I do want to play Exodus. And there you have it, your new and improved Exodus on Linux with animated videos and playlists of games, 
including recommended ones as a checkbox, and the option to run these setup files again with, let's see, yes, TIE Fighter is considered a recommended game. The Emperor is pleased. Another really cool and important feature as an addendum to this install is the alternate launcher option which allows you to play games in DOSBox staging with brand new fancy CRT shaders. This also allows a finer adjustment to things like pixel perfect integer scaling, interlace settings for FMV heavy games, staging zone sound processing, and the aforementioned shaders, which my resolution won't do justice. Check out Phil's computer lab for a more detailed comparison of staging shaders with real CRT output. So what are you waiting for? Go attack some giant robots with Jaguar Kick Spam, or play any of the other 7000 plus games available. I'm not the boss of you. The Exodus Linux patch is an enormous achievement, and is five times more complicated than the previous one. So massive shout outs to the team, you've done a brilliant job. Until next time.